Okay, Guru. Uh, okay. Well, thanks for uh, 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 granting this interview. Um, uh, I would like to talk to you first about Filipino martial arts and, and uh, kind of the, the military base in Filipino martial arts. Uh, you yourself served in the military, right? Yes, yes sir. Uh, you served in the Army? I served in the Army. Okay. Um, when did you serve? Uh, I came in, uh, I believe I graduated in 58, so 15, I mean one year of uh, graduate, three summer sessions and graduate, and then I went into the service in September of uh, 1959. I uh, went to uh, Fort Ord, and then after basic, I, they sent me to uh, Light Drivers Vehicle School for one, for another eight weeks, and then after that eight weeks, I, I went into the 101st Airborne Division, which is the, the home of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, which is the home of the 101st Airborne Division. I wanted to go through gym school and do the whole thing, and while I was in there, uh, my plan was to stay on recon, but because I could type, they they put me in the headquarters company because I, because I could type 42 words a minute, and <laughs> They needed uh, typists. That's know. what they needed at the time. Type, yeah, they, I, says, I told them, I'm going to go on a recon. I said, you're going to recon that typewriter over there. <laughs> <laughs> so I went into the uh, admin center, and all I had to do was, I was still on jump status. You know, I, and I stayed with me on jump down, making a jump every two months, and uh, really enjoyed myself when I was in military service. Right. And you, you said that your, your first jump you took with who? I, actually, my first jump uh, I took with General Westmoreland and his aide, and uh, it was my first jump from a plane, and uh, he was jumping a uh, wind dummy, so I could look over, I just saw these stars, and it was General Westmoreland, and my first jump, I, I jumped over General Westmoreland. Wow, that's pretty amazing. He doesn't, he doesn't know, <laughs> <laughs> but that was my very first jump from a plane, it was with General Westmoreland, because they, he was jumping wind dummy at that day. Right, right, that's amazing. And so um, many of your instructors have been in the military over the years. Right. Practically all of them. You know, obviously, Leo Harum. They were in the, what they call AIB, Allied uh, Bureau Investigation Bureau. And many of them uh, were two years before the landing of MacArthur in the Philippines. Uh, La Costa is the same way they were. They organized guerrilla activity in the Philippines. Uh, practically all my instructors, Jack Santos was Filipino constabulary. That's even before, uh, you know, World War One. Hmm. So he's constabulary, and then he came to the United States in about, I believe, 1907 or 1908. I can't, can't remember the dates right now, but he was Filipino constabulary. You know, a lot of them were Philippine scouts. You know, so uh, Kali at that time, or a screamer, or a nest, whatever they call it, was uh, most of the people were uh, had military background. So usually, when you find the Filipino martial arts as it came to the United States, people were all people who served under the American occupation, and they either served in the Korea, they served in World War II, uh, so they're all very military, and, and the other way is they come from, uh, then they went to farm work after that, but most of them have a, had a military, I can't think of anyone that didn't have a military back, or if they weren't in the military, they were teaching military at that time. So a Kali is more of a, it's more of a warfare art, that's why it works, a lot of people say well, we're going to, make Kali more realistic. It's always been realistic, you know. It's just how you use it. So most of the guys had were special op people and or it was in the first and second Philippine country or they were like Max Sormento served in the Korean conflict. Mm. And uh, that's the story. And then usually the farm workers practiced it. Okay. So that's the format. It's mainly all the people, law enforcement, farm worker, a longshoreman. You know, field worker. This is where the Filipino martial art came in the United States. Right. In small groups. I think the only person that taught it publicly at that time is uh, Reverend Estelidia's father, who taught in the Minnesota Athletic Club. I think it was from 1920 to 1929, but check the dates to make sure that I'm saying it correctly. Yes. But I know it was, he taught in the Minnesota Athletic Club. Hmm. Guys like Jack Santos usually taught stunt people. They didn't know they were learning a screamer. But he taught a lot of stunt people because he uh, did a lot of stunt work before. And uh, so all those, when he was Filipino constabulary, he served in the yeah. southern Philippines. So all of them have a, a background militarily wise. A lot of them, like Sam Tendenchu or PBI, or, or they call it uh, Interpu, hmm. International right. Police. So a lot of them were really uh, had a lot of covert jobs. That, 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 and so they, they taught with such realism because, because of the job.
Right. And the, this is the, the background of Filipino martial arts. Uh, it's, it was in the Filipino community, but as I was told, it was taught to uh, non-Filipinos, but they just had to be close friends of the family. Right. Probably the first people to learn Filipino martial arts were the people, were the officers of the constabulary who were used the Caucasian, and they're usually from America, or they were from uh, Germany, or they were from England. They were usually the officers were in those days, and the constabulary were all uh, Caucasian. Right. If we, if we're talking one or two, three Filipino officers, and then they, the men would be Filipino. So the men that they were fighting right beside, yeah. probably trained them to help keep them yes, alive. Absolutely, there was an interchange in that matter, but that probably happened in the galleons too, where the, they uh, uh, they learned to uh, boarding technique. If they're going to be boarded by another ship of another country, you know, they, they were trained in the use of uh, panadata, the train of. Uh, or sandata, as they call it, the use of uh, bladed work, usually. Mm -hmm. Usually the stick is not taught there, but they might have a stick on board, but usually stick. Mm -hmm. Combination would be sword and dagger, spear and shield. When you say spear and shield, it's always backed up with, uh, with, a, with another uh, auxiliary tool. So right. supposedly the first usage is uh, October uh, 25th, 15, I think 1587 or 1585, I can't remember the date right now. Moore Bay, California, the, the ship was commanded by Anuma. It was a Spanish ship commanded by a Portuguese captain. And we, but they went on shore to get provisions, and they lo lose one Spanish uh, soldier named Contreras in an unknown, unknown Philippine war. They came out of the ship using uh, spear and shield. If you're doing spear and shield, it's always backed up with a sword. Right. And one Filipino dies on the shore. So the first usage probably is probably 1587. Mm -hmm. No one can really say when it was taught. But I would say it's in the early 1900s in America that it probably came in. Yes, sir. But maybe even before that, because uh, even the, the Presidios, supposedly by 1800, the Filipinos, but because they look Hispanic or Mexican or Native American Indian or Chinese or, or possibly mulatto looking, uh, they didn't know what they were. Right, right, so, sure. And so usage already in, in Filipino martial arts. And they're always going to teach their best friends, so no one's really had a written history that. 